The New Zealand Redwood Company has invested in trees planted on three properties, including the Hunderley Forest in North Canterbury. The Hunderley Forest was a pest and weed infested wasteland when first acquired by the Californian based company in 2001, but is now being transformed into a productive unit. General Manager Simon Rapley has been with the company since 2006. This block was known as Conway Hill Station. It's 4,100 odd hectares and I believe that the owners in the past lost control of it during the war when there's a shortage of labour and the property was taken over by weeds, gorse and broom mainly. One of our neighbours here has told me that no one's ever made a profit off this place. They've always been battling the weeds and coming off second best. And it was uh, because of the, the problems here with, um, there were cattle with TB and possums with TB and weed seeds and pigs spreading out onto neighbouring properties that um, one of the neighbours approached the owners at the time and, and uh, offered to try and sell it for them to a forestry company. They'd figured out that the best use of this land was forestry where trees would grow up and suppress the weeds. The owners of the company now, Sopa Wheeler Company of California, bought it at a pretty discount price and set about clearing the weeds off and planting forestry crops here. We have 1,500 odd hectares of redwood and about 650 hectares of Douglas fir. We've made a huge effort and spent a lot of money clearing the weeds off. Uh, we've used machines, we've sprayed and burned in places. We cleared the land enough to get planters in and to get trees in the ground. And then there's been ongoing chemical treatments and hand cutting to get the trees up through the broom. Our oldest trees here are 10 years old and we think 35 to 40 is going to be a good time to harvest them. They'll be big trees and valuable at that point. It has been a battle and I have experience managing forests and broom country in North Canterbury and was hired at least in part because of experience I'd gathered there. Once gorse or broom gets established on land, it very quickly drops huge volumes of seed, and that seed, we're told, can live up to 100 years. You can spray or burn or mow gorse or broom off the land, but there's so much seed in the ground that it'll quickly come away as soon as there's light on the ground that really farming is very difficult if you've got gorse or broom established. There have been times when I thought that this place was going to beat us, but uh, with time and with um, you know trying a, a number of different things, we've managed to um, get a forestry crop going. We're in the downlands of Conway Hills and some of the easier rolling country. It's fertile and we're getting some of our best growth rates here. And on these better sites, we're going to prune all the redwood trees. By cutting the branches off, we're going to produce wood without knots in the bottom log and the premiums that are paid for that wood make it worthwhile to spend the money pruning now and waiting for it. In here we have all the nasties. Broom is the dominant weed here, but we have gorse and blackberry. The broom can easily grow a metre a year, and I would say probably approaching two metres a year and good going. Once the broom and the gorse die back from the shade of the trees, then the blackberry tends to take over. These trees here are nine years old and they're getting their second pruning lift now. We aim to, to prune to 6.5 metres in three lifts. So there'll be one, the final pruning lift will happen probably about age 11. We have been trapping stoats and cats for a number of years and we've also been poisoning wasps. The wasp numbers in recent years are dramatically down on what they were. The stoats and feral cats that we have here don't bother the trees at all, but they do prey on the native birds, and so we're interested in looking after the indigenous wildlife on our land, and so for that reason we're trapping the stoats and cats and also poisoning the wasps to give the, the birds the best chance that they can have. We're still in Hunderley Forest, but we're on what was part of Okarai Down Station was purchased by the company in 2005. One of the problems we have here, and in fact we have on the whole property, is damage to the young plantings by pigs. I would say that we are getting the problem under control. 
When I started uh, coming up here, I would see pigs running across the tracks all day long, and I used to carry a rifle and shoot quite a few. We got all the, the local hunters that were hunting here and got them organised into a club. There are a large number of pigs have come off here over the years, and it's down to what I would consider are acceptable levels now. When we started planting at Hunderley Forest, was we would plant trees and the pigs would, would come in and they, they root around in the soil for worms and insects and maybe some plants and they would um, just root out the small trees. And we were having some fairly high losses. In fact, we still have in our more recent plantings. A mob of pigs can do a lot of damage, uh, very destructive, and they can, they can certainly dig up a lot of ground. And if there's a tree in the way, it gets uprooted and will die. Redwood is typically used for weatherboards, for decking and for fencing. Uses where it's out in the weather but not in contact with the ground. This piece has a little bit of stain on it, which actually makes it last for longer in the weather. Redwood is, is valuable more so than other softwoods because of its colour, its natural durability, like it doesn't rot in the weather, and its dimensional stability, so like if it's exposed to sunlight and rain, it doesn't warp and move, it just stays pretty much as it was cut and dried. Quite a lot of redwood was imported to New Zealand and Australia in the, the, the 20s and 30s. And um, in more recent times, it's uh, western red cedar is, is used f for, for that purpose. And in, in, in occasions, uh, macrocarpa has similar properties, similar durability and, and stability. But redwood is the, the premium product for that, for that use where stability and durability are important. When redwood is freshly cut, it comes out of quite a pinky colour. Once it's sort of exposed to a bit of light, it very quickly goes to a more of a, a rich reddy brown colour. What we're trying to achieve with pruning is wood like we have with these two pieces. There are no knots in the timber, it's just nice straight grained clear wood. This tree here wasn't pruned and it has um, a number of knots which some consider unsightly and it certainly downgrades the wood to a lower price product. So by pruning we will achieve this and uh, a higher grade and a higher price as a result. My belief is that pretty much anything that we grow in New Zealand will be actually consumed in New Zealand and Australia. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.